Hey folks, it's Cal, and uh, I've got something really cool to show you. And uh, what it is, is not this helmet, it's the Nolan B902 Bluetooth headset kit for the Nolan series of uh, helmets. The B902 fits multiple different Nolan devices. Um, the subcodes of the 902 refer to which specific helmet it fits. This is a B902LR designed for the Nolan N105 or S. <clears throat> Actually, I think it's a 5. This kit is really, really good. I've been riding for, oh gosh, uh, over 20 years now, and uh, I have to say, I held off on getting a Bluetooth headset unit for a very long time because I didn't want to be bothered on the bike. Um, but now with things like Google navigation on my phone and having a quad lock mount on the bike, I just thought it's about time. Uh, so I splashed out because I was going to get some BMW system because they were cheap but they stopped selling those. And I went, oh well, whatever. I don't personally care much about the intercom capability but I will talk about that at the end of once I've talked about the things I care about. <clears throat> Number one is the fitment. This is awesome. The first thing you'll notice is it replaces the back of the helmet. Sorry, I'm working sort of backwards uh, here. I'm finding it hard to align myself. It's a brake light. And so when you brake heavily, there's a motion sensor or a G, a G sensor in the, in the unit. And you, your brake light on the back of this flashes, even if it's not paired to your phone, <clears throat> but as long as it's turned on. Let's talk about the mounting. Uh, it mounts inside so underneath here if I, can, if I could show it to you but basically <clears throat> there is a slot underneath this uh, replacement cover so this is the replacement cover and in that slot uh, in the helmet already <clears throat> is a slot for the unit so there's a cutout in the helmet in the back here for the little control box which is about the size of, say, ha half the thickness of a match matchbox packet in there. Just slides in. <clears throat> There's these little wings inside it, which are, of all things, an FM radio antenna. Yeah, this thing has FM radio built in. Uh, the system here mounts directly to the side of the helmet. I'm totally backwards here, folks, sorry. It clips on. You can remove this as well, this clips off if you need to actually, <clears throat> I don't know, undo all the parts and take everything out. The <clears throat> microphone boom is pre-built into the helmet, so there's a little um, notch here. You'll actually have this notch um, on your helmet already, if, uh, even if you don't have the Bluetooth kit. Uh, you'll have that in there, <clears throat> and the microphone basically mounts into that. I'll see if I can unclip it. You'll see in there are there things in the way. You might. I really am backwards and I do apologize here. I should probably look at the lens rather than look at the screen. Um, oh, I'm going to show you this thing. That's right. There is a mount in there ready to go it fits in perfectly uh, let me just try and pop that thing back into its slot the <clears throat> earplugs just a bit of editing there the earpieces are down in here you see that in there down there they mount into cutouts in the helmet, the wire, there's even a routing location for the wire. <clears throat> Fantastic. And the way it operates is <clears throat> you just press and hold this button to turn it on. Welcome. Phone connected. So that's my phone which is connected. And now <clears throat> if I press and hold this button again, um, what I can do is I can tell it to uh, open 
up the phone's voice prompts. So wait for that. Navigation to Melbourne. You probably can't hear that. Okay. I didn't do that right. I'll do it again. Stop navigation. I don't know. Obviously it wasn't navigating. <clears throat> so you can control Google is what I'm saying, which is really, really handy. Now, if you double click this, it's going to go to FM radio. FM radio on 107.5. So that's actually got, uh, I don't want to get a copyright strike here, so I'll turn it off. Um, Now, when it's on FM radio, um, you press and hold either down or up, and it will actually uh, change one, through one of like six presets. And you can just, I think you can double tap them, and it'll search through the frequency band to find the next station. And then you can uh, press three times or something, and it remembers that, and, and it'll store that in the, pr in the preset. So you can actually get an app for it. You plug it in via USB, run it on your uh, computer, or just use the app on the phone via Bluetooth to set the actual radio frequencies you want. And you can set all the various um, audio options. Um, some of those audio options are things like, uh, can you have Google Navigation running at the same time as having the FM radio, which I do. So I listen to the radio and the navigation will interrupt to tell me what to do. And then it'll cut back to the radio again. The delay in that's a little bit long between stopping the Google talking and then the radio kicking back in, but it's really, really good. The audio quality is fantastic. With earplugs in at 80 kilometers an hour, because I ride with earplugs because there's the wind noise. I've been riding for 20 years. My ear hearing is bad enough as it is. I can still hear it. Uh, I can still hear the radio, and that's not at maximum volume. And I don't go to maximum volume because it does tend to clip. You can hear the... The, 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 speaker, the, the speaker's being overdriven and sort of like popping and crackling, so I don't run it at max volume. But if you didn't have earplugs in, you would hear it, hear it even better. And the quality is great. There's really good bass as well. Um, the microphone does not get in your way. Um, you can see it's got a sort of like a little flat cutout here. Um, so you don't actually hit it on your face. Uh, it comes with a spare one of these. It comes with uh, the various different um, mounting options um, for the LR. I think the 902 LR might fit a couple of different helmets, but it definitely uh, fits this one. It's basically unobtrusive and, and just works. Uh, the charging port as well is really, really nice and deep. The charging cable that comes with it fits all the way in there and it's almost waterproof. So, in fact, I suspect you could keep it charged whilst you're riding if you're doing a really, really, really long ride. Um, yeah, the intercom system uh, I'll cover that later, uh, just after I cut this part of the video, but because I haven't used it. But um, most or many Bluetooth headset systems w uh, will communicate across brands using Bluetooth as the communication protocol. So Bluetooth is a short range, 2.4 gigahertz standard. Therefore, as long as your Bluetooth headset is in this like generic or universal mode, you can communicate to other riders and you can have conferencing and all sorts of stuff. So it can be people, two people on the bike in communication on a separate intercom channel to people on other bikes, which is apparently really nifty. And that's the button for that. Um, sorry, this button here on the front is the button for the, uh, the intercom functionality, which again, uh, I'll just go and discuss in a minute. Okay, so let's talk about this, the, uh the basic functionality <clears throat> and the uh, configuration of the unit. Uh, if the helmet doesn't move for more than 60 seconds, it turns off. This is great because it saves the battery. Um, if it's in deep sleep for more than three days, it turns off completely. Excellent. So to this um, deep sleep um, mode, if you bring, shake the helmet again, it, it turns itself back on. This is fantastic stuff. Um, Turning on, turning off, volume adjustments, very, very easy. You can even um, configure some stuff through the smartphone, although why you would do that when riding a motorbike, I don't know. <clears throat> it's a dumb idea. Uh, firmware update, in fact, it did actually tell me when I loaded it 
that the firmware needed updating. Right, so here we go. So let's actually get the thing and turn it on. And of course it will reach from there. Okay, it's connecting. What's this notification? Um, oh, this new head firmware version is from this week. So they're obviously maintaining it. Uh, intercom easy pairing. Basically, I think what you do is the other people scan your QR code and it lets them pair with you. I think it must be if they're using um, Encom, I'm assuming, um, which is fantastic. Uh, basic settings. So audio multitasking allows you to simultaneously listen to audio coming from two different sources. Um, I don't really know why I would use that unless that's to do with intercom. So this smart navi I turned on, this is what I was telling you about. You can actually have the Android phone send you uh, audio and interrupt the FM radio, which is good. Auto on off, that's the deep sleep mode. Audio boost, um, it basically gives it a bit more oomph, which I turned on. So this Vox phone, when the phone rings, saying a word loudly enough. Um, I might turn that off, but I suppose it depends what you like. Because I often forget, when people ring me, I kind of panic uh, a little bit and then go, uh, what button is it do I press to answer again? So I, hmm, I actually haven't answered a call on it yet. I don't actually know what the button is to answer. I'll um, have to look that up. Vox Intercom. So this I actually would like. If I start to use Intercom mode with friends, what this will actually do is obviously let you kick the transmission of voice off just by speaking. Um, if this intercom is disabled, you can start an intercom just by taking, tapping the jog dial. I don't think that's correct. I think they mean it's the button on the front of it, the end button. Because Encom was a technology I think Nolan had for intercom work before Bluetooth was, you know, as pervasive. Uh, high definition audio for intercom. I don't know if that has an impact on range. Just a bit of an overlay audio here. The background volume stuff affects the uh, audio multitasking when there's two audio sources. So when you have two audio things going, you can decide which one is the foreground, which is the background. Voice prompt is obviously when it uh, prompts you for things and tells you what's going on. Side tone. Um, I find side tone sometimes useful depending on what I'm doing, but uh, it can also be a bit disturbing if you hear your own voice in, when you, in your ears when you talk, so mm, isn't necessarily. Advanced noise control, okay. I don't know why you would turn that off, <laughs> honestly. So, FM radio settings, as I said, you can set your frequencies here. I've only set five of the six. Uh, uh, RDS, you can actually have uh, data stuff, um, and that's like, tells you to change radio uh, frequencies. In Australia, Triple J would be the one I'd be most concerned about as it's a national radio station that as you travel across the countryside, the frequencies change. And I use it quite regularly. Um, so I'm not sure if it would actually, if that station even supports that. So I haven't even turned um, RDS um, on. Uh, let's get back to speed dial. You can actually uh, add a number of three numbers in for speed dial. And then you can just basically press buttons, speed dial chapter 9.1, let's go over that. So, yep. Yeah. yeah, so you're actually pressing buttons and it actually does it. So I don't believe you're, I don't believe it actually has a, a, a voice detection. So in other words, what I'm saying is the actual unit doesn't have the uh, ability to um, understand when you say speed dial one it doesn't actually have that that's only something you would get through your phone and that's why i don't have any speed dial numbers set i just don't use that functionality i i say i press the button for a long period of time the phone beeps and i say call my wife for example uh, and it works that way so i tend to use most of the advanced features in the phone as opposed to uh, in here except i do use the fm radio heaps because <clears throat> I don't know, uh, sometimes it's difficult to decide what to listen to, and if you just put the radio on, it's just like a nice little bit of background sort of like um, noise, as it were, other than wind noise that you can listen to. Uh, so I actually quite like that. I'm actually quite, quite fond of it. 
Uh, some other things the manual talk about, which um, I probably didn't show you, is that the, uh, the cable that comes with it is a traditional, and I'm going to grab this for you, if I can get it down, it's a traditional USB cable, USB micro I think that is, and as you can see it's got that deep sort of mount on it, so it mounts in there. You can play music over the USB cable. So you plug it in, it'll charge the device, and you can play music. It acts as like an MP3, you know, like uh, headset, I suppose. And you plug this into your audio device and you can play music um, through the cable. Um, the cable is very handy because, as I said, you might find that it goes flat as you're riding and if you can charge it, connect it to a long extension lead and a USB extender, you could potentially charge while riding. So let's just talk now about um, the uh, intercom functionality, which I don't use right now, but it's going to come in handy when I can convince some friends of mine to get their own Bluetooth headsets. Oh, the headset just went into standby mode in case you heard that. But basically, you can pair them up with other 600 and 900 series. This is a 902 systems, how to do it, um, and other NCOM systems. And then if you're doing an intercom communication, you can actually have different channels, right? So you actually have channel one, channel two, channel three, which is handy. Although I suppose you don't want to be riding with people who you don't like that much and then go, oh, geez, isn't that guy censored? And you realize you're on his channel. So don't do that. And the Vox intercom was talking. And I think if the Vox intercom system is disabled, uh, so I suppose when you press it, connection briefly press N, disconnection of active intercom, I think it stays permanently open. So your const that must be the background noise setting. So it's not like, yeah. So I think the Vox intercom function is effectively replacing the need to press buttons to open a channel. And then the sensitivity, um, yeah, this intercom switches off automatically when both users do not speak for 20 seconds. If the intercom conversation was started by pressing the manual connection key, which is the connection button, which is the N button on the, as I said, the, the big button. Let me show you what that looks like in case you've forgotten. There we go. So that N is the intercom button, right? So that's the button you press for intercom work. And that just said intercom failed because I don't have any connections to intercom. <laughs> so, back to the documentation. Yeah, so basically you press the button to start it or you can do Vox intercom mode. And I suppose you change channels with the button, but then you just start talking to actually activate the actual connection itself. Um, you can do conference grouping. This is interesting. Um, I have not looked this up. Um, but basically you can have like a four-way conversation and there's this universal intercom function this is what I was talking about so the universal intercom function 2 is a feature of the newer NCOM models and I just I can't tell you which brands are going to work but some will so I suppose if you wanted to save money you might just want to check to see what all your friends are using before you purchase the NCOM unit. But of course, if you had a Nolan helmet, I don't know what else you'd use. It's just so good. It's just fantastic. Um, all right, so that's I'm happy with that intercom sort of stuff. Oh, here you go. You've got these remote controls. I don't really care about that. Uh, I'm quite happy with the unit. I wanted to show you the um, brake light system now, which is called ESS. So hold on, I'll show you. Okay, so as I said, as I said, ESS is uh, a motion activated. So I'm gonna see if I can get it to uh, work. There we go. So you can see it it's, uh, flashes for a while. So what it detected, oh, did you see that? I don't know if you saw that, so I'm gonna do it again. Uh, see that? I basically, accelerated and decelerated the helmet really quickly and it flashes and it's quite bright so anybody riding behind you probably would get the hint 
to actually slow down. And you can actually set the sensitivity of that. If you're riding along and your friends are saying, mate, your fucking helmet's flashing at me all the time and you're not braking, then in that case, what you would do is you would say, all right, no worries, mate, I'll actually adjust the sensitivity of it. And I do believe that sensitivity um, can be set in the default settings. I'm not sure if you can, yes, yeah, see this ESS, see if you can see that. This ESS status and ESS sensitivity. Um, it's got low, medium, and oh, low, medium, and high. I don't know if you can actually see that, but uh, I, if this screen's very small on the camera, and ESS is basically on or off. I left it on. I left it on medium sensitivity. I suppose if you're a sports bike rider, maybe it's at a uh, low sensitivity, <laughs> since you'll be braking hard a lot. Um, but yeah, overall, it's a fantastic system. Uh, I can thoroughly recommend it. It is not cheap. Uh, I think I paid uh, $470 Australian uh, delivered um, from a local retailer. But honestly, I'm stoked I bought it. Audio quality is fantastic. Microphone sensitivity is great. Can't go wrong.